Hi friends, it's Liz here. Thank you for joining me today. My next tutorial is here. I'm so excited. Um, I wanted to make something that would be easy for all of you to do and uh, something that would be fun. You can theme it and send it to your, you know, pen pals and snail mail, etc. So this um, is a fall themed one. I wanted to um, kind of start with that because it's my favorite season. And, you know, I started looking at all the goodies around us and I thought it's just perfect to, um, to start doing this. Um, for this project, I also used um, some scrapbook paper instead of digitals. And I've added uh, some die cuts. This is like a little mason jar and the little bags. And uh, I thought about, you know, pieces that uh, a pen pal could use or you could use in your journals or in your planners. And these would be so cute for like a fall themed layout as well. I've got a little pocket with um, a little tag and it's just so cute. I, I just love the way all the little pieces go together because of the theme, of course. Um, a little journaling card here and a little side tuck spot. And I love this uh, little fall into autumn. I did a little belly band and I'm definitely going to show you in this video how to make this um, and put one together yourself. Um, I've got a little flip down here. Now this was not my original idea. I did see someone mention that Gail had uh, made something like this and then of course she you know she did one and I've seen a couple of other ladies as well. But this is my version of it. This little mason jar that um, I showed you a quick how-to video on how to make these. I will link that video below. I think they come out super cute and it's just perfect for this, you know, fall themed kit. Uh, I've got a little die cut envelope with some additional little pieces that are also themed. So you can see everything here is fall themed and it's all done with uh, primarily um, scrapbook paper. This little bag is from uh, a tattered dream, the little glassine bags, and I just did a little bit of collaging on it. And then just added some little pieces again that, um, you know, you can fussy cut around and add to your um, journal page or your layout, etc. Your planner layout. I think it's so fun because I don't really know, um, you know, sometimes if you're sending it in snail mail what the person would use it for but I like it to have some versatility and it can be used in many places so here's a little journaling card and then these ones I just cut them up and made them into like a little journaling spot um, I believe these ones were from calico collage and I just had them you know as extra so I thought it's the theme it goes with what uh, I'm showing you and it would be perfect so I'm going to show you how to make this later in the video now I'm just going to flip to the back to show you that this was all made with uh, using a, an envelope as a base, which I really, really love. I kept the pocket in the back so I can add more pieces to it as much as I want to. And you can just imagine this being fully loaded with ephemera when you send it to your friend and they've got the nice little surprise of all the little flip outs and tuck spots. I did end up rounding the edges and changing the closure a little bit from what you'll see in the video, how, how I'm going to show you how to make this one. Um, but I hope that you like this share. Uh, also, because I've had many requests from a lot of my subscribers, I've just added something to the shop as well, which I'll quickly show you. Um, I've been asked many times if I could add some, you know, small happy mail kits that would include some things that um, I send in the mail, but also things that you may not have yourself. So I've been asked for like a little, you know, quick kind of die cut kit. And so that's what I have here and it will be in the shop. This one is fall themed. So you have um, two cute envelopes that have a really nice um, design on them because they are from a die cut. I've used all cardstock for these pieces so it makes them nice and sturdy. You've got your little bags as well. You've got two of those. And in the shop, you'll see this kit as the image, um, but you may not get the exact um, images you see here but they will be fall themed so what I'm hoping to do going forward is just to add a few fall themed you know die cut pieces this one has like three different tags uh, three different little pockets the mason jars and the little envelopes so 
I hope you like this and thank you for those of you that requested that I add little bits like this to the shop because it's nice as an add-on, you know, things that you may not have with the different shapes and designs, um, but it's nice to get a little something different. Maybe you could send this to your pen pals or, you know, in snail mail or use it in your project. So I'll be making different themes as I go. And um, if you have any requests, please send me an email and I'll try and kind of get that set up as well. So. I just wanted to quickly mention that, that these will be now listed in the shop and I'll be adding them, as I said, um, as I go, depending on the theme and um, check all the details in the listing that I will leave the link to below. Okay, so getting started on the project. So I start off with an envelope and this one, I'll give you the measurements, but it can be any envelope because you truly can um, you know, make this based on your own measurements of whatever envelope you're going to use. So I'm just showing you here with the ruler what the dimensions of this envelope is. But like I said, you can use any envelope because you're really just cutting all your pieces to fit around it. Uh, so these are the cardstock papers that I'll be using in the project. And I really wanted to, as I mentioned, go into the fall theme. I thought it would be perfect planning for it. Um, you know, you can have all the pieces that you are adding to it and sending to your friends and they'll all be nicely themed. So I've gone ahead and cut up two pieces which will make my flip outs. And as you can see here, I've just measured, measured them to fit the envelope. Um, and I am going to basically score each one now I've done a video previously, a tutorial for a flip book where I show you how to make an entire little booklet um, with this similar technique. If you haven't seen that, I will link it below. But here you're just um, basically going to be scoring at uh, uh, a quarter of an inch here and you're doing it to both sides. So just be mindful of the way your paper is facing and if you want your flip outs to open left or right, as I'm going to show you here. So I made sure that I had one that opens to the left, one that opens to the right. And if you have double-sided cardstock, then you know it may not necessarily be too much of a problem where you're going to be scoring. So as you see here, I've just made sure that the scores are nice and crisp because that's what you'll be using for your flip out um, pieces to the little uh, envelope. So now I'll just be um, adding the glue to attach them to the envelope and then I'm just going to show you how I'm doing that. I know many of you have asked to see sort of the full process and not just sort of the shorter version because you do enjoy kind of crafting with me when I'm showing you how to make some of these projects. So here I'm just adding glue to the first flap that I'll be putting down. And again, you decide which flap, you know, you'll be kind of attaching to go to on the top or bottom. But for, <clears throat> excuse me, the beginning of this, it's not so important to know which side is which. So I'm attaching it to the right side of the envelope first and then making sure that, you know, it is all lined up as best as we can get it there. And then I'll be attaching the left side of the flip out. So what I loved about this project is that it's really easy to make. You probably have everything already in your craft area to um, to make this project. And I think it's just such a fabulous you know, gift to send to someone. It is full of goodies once you finish. You can just keep adding to it. Um, and it just looks really nice and you've taken the time for yourself to craft and you know whoever you send this to knows that you've taken the time to make something really nice and fun for them to open up so I've attached the two flaps and again I'm just going to show you how that looks here and now we're going to look at attaching the third piece which I've seen some people attach it um, so that it flips up in the um, the project but I wanted my pocket uh, and it will be a pocket to flip down so as you can see I've just made sure that I had that quarter inch that I could fold over when I cut my piece and then I'm covering the majority of the envelope here I'm showing you that you need to make sure before you um, attach it that you have um, enough space to close those flaps so I've cut it just short enough to make sure it 
you know, fits nicely within the flaps that you're folding over and that it, it just makes sure it has a nice fit and it doesn't get caught on anything. So again, I'll just be adding glue to the part that I'm attaching. And as you can see here, it just fits nicely. It covers the majority of the inside of the envelope. And I'm just really liking how that's turning out. So of course you can do this with any theme, but um, I just started with the fall theme as well. I have been thinking about maybe doing some projects like this one and you know kind of having things pre-cut for you so um, I would have this full kit ready for you to just assemble let me know what you think about that because um if that's something you're interested in as well I could go ahead and you know make some pre-cut pieces and pre-scored and all you have to do is attach them when you get them so here I'm showing you how you can make your own tabs if you, if you don't have those fancy tub um, tab punches I'm just cutting out um, or punching out two circles again it could be any size but I think this is my half inch circles and I'm just going to attach both of them together on either side and then you've got your cute little tab uh, tab spot to um, you know that you can attach anything to it also visually shows you that you have something to flip open so I think it's just a nice little addition and you can make this with anything but you know I thought if you've got a circle punch which I think is one of the standard ones that most of us crafters have some sort of a circle punch then um, you know then it's easy to make the tabs as well so I'm just attaching both of them to the top flip out here so it just shows you that my first flip out will be to the left when I am opening this um, flip out booklet thingy so again we've got that flip out to the left so now we are going to um, cover some of the white spots i um i you know you can leave it like this and you can just add your additional pockets and tuck spots to it but i thought i would just cover it up a little bit this is some um, some sort of it's a very thin paper as you can see it's like a, a kid's um scrapbook paper I guess from one of those little booklets and I had some of that paper so I thought I would use it just to cover up the insides and not leave it so um, bright white um, but again if you had double-sided scrapbook paper you know you wouldn't need to do this part and if you wanted to just leave the um, the white color of the background of the scrapbook paper you could do that as well for the bottom flip out I'm just covering as you can see here part of it I'm leaving a little bit not covered because we'll be doing something with that now again I'm just testing that everything folds nicely and I haven't um, you know missed any spots that uh, needed to be cut up or anything like that so the next step here is I want to add a little pocket to the left flip out and I'm showing you just gluing on three sides of this cardstock a lot of you have asked me sometimes as well um, you know showing you how to make the pockets so here we go just add glue to three sides and now my top part will be my little pocket there again um, you know a lot of the times we have this um, card stock that we purchase but end up not using all of it or none of it and I thought I'd start making some projects with my card stock that it's not just journals um, because I do love making journals but I've also lately been making a lot different projects if you have seen my channel uh, I'm just playing a lot with easier to make crafts things that you can send in snail mail I have a whole playlist on snail mail if you haven't seen it as well as tutorials etc on my channel um, and so I hope that you're enjoying those as well so I'm thinking on this side I was going to make a belly band so I just cut a strip of uh, cardstock to fit and then for the bottom, when I had mentioned leave a uh, spot clear, is because we're going to cover up as well. Um, I'm going to add a pocket to this side. And the way I do that is just you add another piece of your cardstock um, just to go over a little bit on the side that we already covered. And then this way you've got a nice little finished pocket that will be a side pocket. And I think when you flip something down, I find it easier if you've got side pockets than if you have top loading or bottom loading pockets. So here, um, I'm just making sure again that this fits. And now um, you'll see that I've got a little side pocket here. You've got your left pocket, your belly band, and then you've got your, 
pocket at the bottom. So I think the next step here is to cover up the inside of this envelope just to sort of finish off the, um, the way it looks. Um, and then next step also is adding the closure and then we'll just load up um, how this will look and then we will tackle the back I think as well. So here I'm just showing you again I've just pre-measured a piece that will go in the center to cover up all my you know little edges and now you've got a finished center you've got again your flip outs and I think it's just such a nice project because it doesn't look like it has all these little extra flip outs and flip downs and it just looks so nice. So I figured that I would just uh, quickly you know, distress the edges so there's no white showing. Um, I also have a link of supplies that I will link below in case you're wondering what supplies I use and what are my favorite supplies. I always like to link that below as well. So I thought about adding a little kind of focus here because you've got that white space and I didn't want to leave it like that. And again, I'm just reusing um, some of the pages in my scrapbook that I didn't think I would use in many other projects, but I think it's just perfect for this one as well. So this one says hello fall, which I think is a perfect for the theme, of course. And then um, what am I adding next? Yes, I think I'll be decorating the cover or the front flip out a little bit. So for this part, again, super easy, something that you may already have. I'm just taking a vintage piece of book page, some fall themed stickers that I had around, but you can always just, you know, use the cardstock because most of the cardstock if it's themed already has some die cuts that come with it or you know something that you could use so here I'm just trying to figure out what side of the book page I want to use and how large a piece I may want to play with this is sort of just my process usually I would skip this step and just show you how I finished it but I know some of you mentioned you like to see the process and um, it kind of helps you as well in and seeing you know when we're crafting what we end up deciding on and how we play around with pieces so this is just me trying to figure out you know just the quick cover for this one I didn't want to add too many pieces I also don't want it bulky so I could have added you know laces and trims and different types of fabrics but because I'm thinking of this to be sent in the mail I want it as flat as possible but also to decorate it and fit as many things as I can um, when I'm you know finished with the whole product so here I think I'm just trying to decide again which of the stickers I like best and I I end up using this one I believe and you'll just see the process here as well. So I'll just keep um, you know trying to decide and decorating the cover etc for the, the little booklet here. Oh my goodness my friends so we had a bit of a COVID-19 scare um, a little while back and um, it really made us think so much about you know everything that's important to us and what's going on of course around the world it's constant and um, as it turns out everything was fine but of course you know we went on quarantine ourselves until we knew better it was um my husband we thought he had been exposed and so of course you know you start to think about who you've seen and where you went and and all that stuff and you know worried about family and friends and you know the kids of course and so um, he came home and he said you know he he felt he had a fever and so of course you know we called the hotline the health hotline and um, or, or the doctor I should say and um, yeah the first thing they said which we kind of already knew is you know quarantine get that test done um, well get the test done and then quarantine so that's sort of the steps they ask you to do so he went and had the test and then there's the waiting time so as soon as you know he was home he was quarantined in his in in our basement basically and um me and the kids um you know kind of stayed on the main floors and um it was just a matter of figuring out does anyone else have symptoms you know have we heard of anyone else having symptoms and you know, we self quarantined until that test came through. Um, after the first day, we sort of realized, you know, that wasn't it. Um, the doctor did uh, mention that it could be a different virus because, you know, we are starting into that season where different viruses are around. But uh, of course, you know, until you know, 
you can't take any chances. So, um, you know, those few days of waiting, we actually had three days of waiting for the results, which I'm not even sure how quick that is for most of you. But for us, it seemed like an eternity, but I'm sure it was as quick as it could get done. And, um, you know, making sure that uh, anything that he came into contact with was, you know, cleaned and disinfected. And of course, making sure that, um, you know, when I was um, kind of, you know, giving him food and things that he needed, that anything that came out from the space that he was quarantined in was, you know, cleaned and, and disinfected. And, oh my gosh, it was just... I was just so worried primarily of course for us our kids but anyone that we may have been into in contact with and of course he had no idea where he would have picked it up um, because he has been working but because he's self-employed as well um, the job and the employees um, are all sort of following all the protocols so no one really comes into contact with anyone else and they all have their own stations and everything that they do so um, you know, I, I knew that he was very safe. He was always wearing a mask. We always wear masks when we leave the house, if we have to leave the house. And so, you know, that just, oh my goodness, it was just such a scary few days to go through and contacting everyone just in case. And, you know, it was just one of those moments that really kind of sits you back and, um, and makes you realize, uh, the little things and the big things, etc. So, Luckily, as I said, after the tests came back, um, he was negative. He didn't have anything. And, you know, it was as also knowing, you know, how we handled this during that process of trying to figure out what was happening. But, oh, my goodness, I just it was just one of those moments that um, everything stopped for us. And, of course, it took me a little bit to get back into the creative process because, you know, being creative was the last thing on my mind during that time so anyways um let's get back to this as you can see i've decided to add another pocket in the center so i just cut up a strip of um, cardstock again and made it into a little pocket in the center and then i think the next step is going to be adding the closure to it so that's what you'll see me do next and then eventually we'll tackle the back because this is not something that you'll be adding into a journal. I think it's too big to be added into a journal the way it is. So, or, you know, the, the sizing of it. So I'm thinking I'll decorate all sides so that it, it's a nice little package that I'm sending in the mail and it will just be finished, you know, on, on all the sides. So I'll be adding this as well. And um, I'm just trying to decide again, you know, what I'll be what I want to add and, and what the closure will be. I think for me, the hardest things sometimes are closures. I, you know, sometimes I'm thinking I might use Velcro or maybe try and use some magnets, but I kind of like to, you know, wrap things around. I find with uh, ribbons or strings, um, that sort of thing. Um, sorry, silk ribbon, that seems to be my favorite go-to. But for this one, I think I'm just going to do um, uh, sort of wrap it around with string because I think it just suits it better at least for this project so um, again if you see me using any tools I will link those in the description box below um, so that you can find them um, as well if you're interested so I've decided this is the string that I think will match I play around with this a little bit I don't think I think I changed it actually. Yes, I did. At the end, I actually ended up changing the closure just slightly, at least how I tied it around. But it is one of those things, you know, that um, I always have a hard time with is figuring out a closure for something um, because I find that um, I like to make them easy to close, but also fun to close. There's something about tying something with string that I really enjoy. So I usually go for, you know, tying things with string, especially if it's a project like this that may need a little bit of extra room, depending on how much um, I load inside of it. So, um, yeah, so playing around with that and then, you know, just figuring out um, what other ways I may actually um, decide to tie it around. So 
Let me know what your favorite closures are for projects. Um, I'm interested in finding out what your go-to is or if you have a favorite or you just kind of base it on your project. So the next thing here is the back. I want to make sure I still have access to the pocket because, you know, it's usable. It's an envelope pocket. I want to use it. Uh, I'm cutting my piece to fit. But what I want to make sure to do is leave a little kind of opening to show that there is a pocket there. And so for this, uh, again, I'll be using a, um, a paper punch and I'm just measuring the center to make sure that when I punch my um, my piece here that it has the right spot um, of where I want it to go. And, you know, usually, like I said, I skip these steps, but I know a lot of you have asked me to try and film as much as possible because um, not only do you enjoy seeing the full process, but then you get to see the little boo-boos that we make and how we go about fixing them. So this for when I started for, you know, this part here, I thought I would I only wanted a little bit cut out. But then when I put it up, I thought it was just too small an opening. So I go ahead and make a bigger one, of course. Uh, making sure that it's just a, a bigger area um, that you can see that there is, you know, a hole or, or a pocket, I should say, um, in the back of it. Now, when you glue this down, make sure that you put the glue on the back of the envelope and not on the page that you're gluing. And the reason I say that is because you run the risk of gluing everything shut if you're not um, paying attention to where the glue is. So, um, I had started adding the glue to the back of the paper, but then I realized, no, 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 I have to add it to the back of the envelope because this way it only sticks to where it's supposed to, as you can see there, right? So remember to just glue where the envelope is and not on your actual paper that you are gluing to your envelope. That's just a tip from making a lot of boo-boos in this type of project. Okay, so I think this is it. The, the last thing that... Um, I'm just going to do is add a little bit of a um, like a little holder in the back just to keep the envelope flap closed and then that's it for the project and of course I've shown you how I added all the different pieces to it um, you saw at the beginning just differently how I wrapped the closure it's the same closure I just wrapped it a little differently and um, I just did a little bit of collaging I think on the back flap and I think that's all the changes I made. Oh yes, and I did round the corners of the flaps because um, here I realized it was a little too square for me. So I changed, um, I, I made sure to uh, round off the edges of the flip outs. And that was the only difference that I didn't show because I kind of, you know, filmed that and not sure what happened. But you can kind of see this is the finished product. And then I just added those little touches at the end. So I hope you enjoyed the share. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share and leave a comment below. Thank you so much for stopping by and I will see you next time.